So the morning show is called The Insane Asylum. Yes, welcome to Who Are These Broadcasters, also known as the Zane Asylum. I'm Christian Blatt. He's Eric Zane. Easy. We haven't chatted in a little bit. We're so happy to be back in our regular spot right here. And uh, in the time since I've last talked to you, you've clearly gone full Q. Uh, there is a Q everywhere there. Uh, Q100, but uh, I feel like you're just one step away from, uh, you know, going really into uh, some conspiracy stuff. Yeah, Q QAnon, and that's what we're shooting for with the radio station. Uh, radio station is nestled uh, amongst people who try to kidnap the governor. So this makes sense. <laughs> it is that part of the state, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am not going to be going on the radio talking about uh, Biden at any point. I'll be I'll be yeah. killed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I think that uh, that's a good approach. And uh, our buddy uh, Dave Sarah, who I think will be doing something with us on the show in a few weeks, he says, hell yeah. And uh, Q was right. Now, that's the kind of comment you usually uh, have to get me to uh, pay to say, but I'll say it for you. Uh, Thank you. In any, any case... Uh, before we start to bombard our audience with some what I feel are tremendous clips from the world of local news, uh, and uh, before Eric even tells you how Super Chats work on this show, uh, I wanted to share this clip from a recent Who Are These podcasts with the great Brian Johnson, whom I like very much. I uh, did the show that he and Iraq used to have together uh, a couple of times, and uh, I was actually featured in the final episode of that show where uh, Carl and producer Chris uh, just uh, made fun of the fact that uh, Brian and I were barely paying attention to E-Rock while we did the show. Uh, and it's a badge of honor. Uh, in any case, uh, he gives a really honest assessment about the world of Super Chats. And uh, I wanted to kick off our show with uh, this sage-like advice from the great Brian Johnson. Super Chats just flood in. It's yeah. crazy. You know, so people are like, well, I want a taste of that. Without yeah. knowing, like, well, you got, you got to build your audience and you have to have something to offer. Like, they're not just going to give you money for the hell of it. Just ask well, Christian that, and Eric Zane. <laughs> that, well, right. But that, <laughs> good point. I, I, look, he makes the point. You know, it's uh, we we uh, try to get the Super Chats. We don't tailor the show for the Super Chats. We try to have fun. And uh, I'm just happy because that means that Brian Johnson's watched our show, you know. <laughs> and uh, we... We try to make fun of the way we're passing the hat and begging yes. for super chats. We are we we're not full KB, but you know, we're asking for it. Our hands are out. Yeah, they are. But I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of uh, super chats, we actually already have one that uh, before the show started, uh -huh. we had a uh, twenty dollars super chat, and uh, at the moment. This would fall into uh, our rule for the show. Explain, Eric, how this works before I read it. Okay. So if you want Christian to close the show by saying something ridiculous, i.e., uh, well, what you do is you write it and put a dollar amount uh, with it. And if it is the highest dollar amount with said ridiculous comment to sign off the show, Christian will read it uh, to sign off. So that's it. Yeah. You can also get on the super chats or if you're, I should say you can uh, have your comment posted. If it's funny, if you post something funny, make us laugh. We'll put it up there too. Right. There are a few of those. Sometimes we'll put up uh, comments that uh, show up and uh, make us laugh. But Chris primer gets the bit. He has given us $20 and uh, I, I, I hope you didn't send it from an Apple device. You know, they take 20% off the top, Chris, but that's all right. Thanks for, 
thanks for the 20 bucks. So uh, Chris wants me to uh, start off the show by pointing out that who are these broadcasters is made possible in part by the First National Bank of Israel. Shalom. Shalom. Can we offer you a loan? So uh-huh. thank you, Chris Primer. I will read that again unless somebody comes in and gives us $20.01. Uh, you know, uh, dang lizard, I want to hear about St. John. Even if you want to write about St. John for free, I'll put one up. Uh, there's uh, so many, so many great super chatters out there, and uh, we appreciate them spending their time with us. So uh, let's kick off where we so often do with some local news. Others imitate it. We appreciate it. So obviously it's always important to start any show with uh, a big moment and uh, it doesn't always work out. Local news believes the same thing. And if their big moment goes awry, well, then we're able to start off our show with that. So at least somebody gets a great kickoff to the show here. This was uh, outside of a recent boat show and I believe in the San Diego area. So, uh, We'll have to recap it a little bit for our audio audience, but uh, there's a reporter sitting with a man who has what seems to be some kind of rocket jet pack that uh, is over the water. Look over there. And it starts right now. And they pull wide so that he can fly up in the air. And instead he just plants into the water. Cut back to the studio. Oh, oh my God. There's a happy what is that? What, what is, is that? that? Oh, I know what that is. I'm- yeah. It's a goddamn jetpack. It's a goddamn jetpack that didn't work at first. Oh. And as cool as it is to see somebody flying around on a jetpack, it's a lot better to watch somebody whose jetpack doesn't work. Oh. 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 It wasn't yeah. even close. He just he, 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 he fell like a goddamn Baltimore bridge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. I, you know, you mentioned that and I, I, I realized I got to get that for next week. That Baltimore bridge was, uh, was, was really something. I, I'm not quite sure why I don't have it probably because I've got, you know, like 20 clips like that one. Yeah. But, yeah let, let, let the world, uh, catch up. Nobody. Knows. Yeah. We'll catch up. Hey, 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 we'll get to it next week. Uh, so that obviously is, uh, some local news going awry and whenever I see it, like a lot of times talk shows, will still do in-studio animal segments. And I, I feel like they're only designed so that things can go wrong. Eric, I want you to watch this clip. And uh, when it's over, you tell our audience who you think I most identify with in this uh, specific clip uh, from a morning show with uh, some animal friends in studio. Do Sir, they I'm going to stay here by Joni. Do they know each do they no hold him tight. Hold him tight. <laughs> hold him tight. <laughs> Alligator. Hold him tight. Got it. <laughs> I, Oh, it's okay. All right. Oh, Joni, you got it. <laughs> the the zookeeper think- re- repeatedly saying, hold him tight. And the reporter's like, I am. <laughs> I, I think uh, you most identify with the gator because that's what you do when black people are around. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say the lady who kind of stands there and does nothing, but, you know, it's hard to, I can't sue you for slander, Eric. Uh, I think that... Uh, <laughs> There might be uh, there might be something to that. So yeah, it's uh, it's just wriggle it around. And yeah, maybe it's like you know, look, there's times where certain people come to the door in your neighborhood, and your dog probably does start barking a little extra. So maybe alligators are the same way. You know, it's, it's that like, was great. You can't expect me to eat that. <laughs> Kyle throws five bucks at us at us and says, "I don't know why people shit on you guys." This is on par with all other podcasts. Love it. Zane, don't get hung up on doing radio. Put your time into podcasts. Oh, believe me, I do. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't stop doing podcasts. No, do yeah. I, I I try. I just keep doing more. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I think that uh, our buddy Carl Hamburger, H-A-M-B-U-R-G-E-R, has a, a great point about uh, you know sort of the future of actual local radio. But you didn't 
step away from podcasting. You're just like, no, no, no just put more jobs. Oh, on yeah. Plate. Just more to do. Just yeah. get up a little more, earlier. You more know? to do. More more inmates in the insane asylum to entertain. And uh, I think that's what uh, that's what that's we're right, on. Christian. That's right, Christian. And we're playing we're playing the hits, too, on the queue. Uh, do you, uh, is there a song that, uh, so what, this was like your sixth day doing the, the insane asylum seven. Yes. Yes. Seven. Sir, okay. Seven. Right. 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 So it's, it's Tuesday. Um, is there a song you're already sick of because you've had to play it so many times in seven days? Well, the interesting thing about this radio station, I swear to God is, um, they don't have like a playlist. Oh, wow. Uh, do you, you get, get to pick your music? Correct. Oh my gosh. So. I can literally play everything that I want to play. It's a very unique radio station. You won't find many like this. It's uh, owned by a husband and wife team who have no radio experience whatsoever. Well, clearly, when you consider who they're hiring, uh, you know, yes. obviously, they, they don't know any better. <laughs> now, do you, are you going to do the old trick where uh, when you have to take a dump, you're going to play Jethro Tull Thick as a Brick? Absolutely. Long yeah. songs. That's, that's how you do it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let's uh, talk back. Uh, let's focus back on uh, some local news uh, reporters who maybe don't understand how the technology works and they might get a little too excited. Uh, this one was posted on the discord by Dashy 64. I feel like I'm shouting out my little ponies now or bronies or something, but Dashy 64, thank you for bringing this to my attention. This guy just loves the tuba. Here. Oh, yes. You know I love the tuba. He does love the tuba. It's one of my favorite instruments. Listen to that. Oh, no. <laughs> Drop the mic. K kills his. No, no. The uh, sound killed his bike. <laughs> uh, are you sure he didn't drop it down No, maybe there? he dropped it. You know what? I think he you're right. He did drop it down there. He did drop it. <laughs> he dropped his goddamn microphone. You know what? You're right. I thought that the static was the funny part, but <laughs> instead, this kid's going to get a mouthful of microphone. Oh! <laughs> and you know what? It didn't even slip. He just let it go. <laughs> I had seen that clip four times before right now. You see it the first time and you're like, no, 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 dummy. He dropped the microphone. It's an even better clip. I like uh, how you didn't know that he dropped it. <laughs> I just like the static, you know, and, uh, you know, I, look, I really look out for our audio audience. I always want to make sure that they have oh. a good experience with the show. So sometimes I close my eyes when I look at the clips, Eric. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, I know. There's uh, there's all kinds of uh, fun that happen in the studio and in and around. Sometimes the mishaps come just because you're not paying attention and you're bantering with yourself uh, before you think you're going on, uh, as happened in this uh, Washington area studio. I'm so pale. You're on it. Today, snow is crippling much of the Washington <laughs> lowland. It's, it's really the look on her face, you know, and uh, I, I can't wait for uh, Aubrey Plaza to do the uh, <laughs> biopic of this woman's life from oh, the moment yeah. where she's like, I'm so pale. Hey, dummy, we're on the air. Wow. Oh, yes. There's that look. Today, snow is crippling much of the Washington <laughs> lowland. <laughs> yes. And then the other uh, chick is still just laughing along with it. That is, that is great. She's like, you dumb cunt, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> I always hated you. Well, sometimes you just can't help yourself uh, for something that surprises you like me, not realizing that microphone fell in the tuba. Uh, Eric, I'm, I'm going to freeze frame when a, a, a certain image comes up during this news story. And uh, I'm going to give you the chance. I believe seeing it for the first time to uh, tell our audience what it is exactly that you see. And then we'll see how the uh, reporter handles seeing that for the first time herself. Lines around America this morning in Michigan. Police have arrested a man who's suspected of chopping up his wife. Michigan police say suspect Stephen Grant was captured in Michigan's Wilderness State Park and airlifted to a hospital. Oh. Okay, so we've got a mugshot for Stephen Grant. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable uh, mugshot. Yeah. So uh, the, it, it's like he's seeing the James Brown and Nick Nolte mugshots for the first time. Yeah. And his eyes have bugged out of his head. Yeah. And they're so the one is so much lower on the face yeah. than the other one. 
Yeah. That is, that is what a, uh, what a fucked up face. They say you can't judge a book by its cover, Eric, but um, I don't know. This guy kind of gives me uh, chopped up his wife into small parts vibe just by yeah. looking at him for the first time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure that uh, as distracting as it was to us, this woman's a professional, so I'm sure she's going to handle it well. When Grant was captured in Michigan's Wilderness State Park and airlifted to a hospital. The area is more than 400 miles from Grant's oh. suburban Detroit home. The 37-year-old man is accused in the death of his wife, Tara Lynn Grant. Oh, no. A oh. torso and body parts... <laughs> Put it back. Of who is believed to be the mother of two were found this weekend in and near the Grant home. Oh. Even Grant. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. And, There's uh, so much wrong with that. The torso and body parts. Laughing while she says torso and body parts. That wow. that's uh that's an all-timer clip, and uh I, you're, I uh, appreciate it. You're almost uh, you're almost better off just as soon as you do the first laugh. Say, so, ladies and gentlemen. I'm laughing because of that mugshot. And I'm not even going to try to explain this story to you anymore because yes. of how ridiculous this is. Yeah, I, I, that, that's why I'm laughing. If I try to complete this story, I'm going to laugh even harder at the worst parts of the story. That's why I gave credit to a few weeks ago. We had that clip where the, the local newscaster was just like, we got to go to break. We'll, we'll finish the story later. Cause he knew he's like, no, no, this is going to be bad. <laughs> this, this clip's going to go viral. I'm going to be laughing at a torso. So they, they, they just went, went to the break, you know? So, uh, I, I think that that's the, it's really the only way out, you know? Ooh. And, uh, Look, sometimes we all get tongue tied, and uh, it, this is kind of an example of sometimes you just need to cut and run, as uh, this uh, Southern California weathercaster found out. Chance of some particip participation, participate, per, per, it's rain. It's going to bring a possibility of some rain that will be moving into our area. So <laughs> she couldn't say precipitation. It's you almost tripped over it. That yeah, would have been I a did. Great clip. I did do that. It would have been fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, but she realized, like, oh, precipitation is uh, going to be a tough one. So I like that she's just like, no, nope, it's going to rain. It is <sighs> absolutely going to rain. It's know? a good thing she's attractive because she wouldn't have any place in the world if she was ugly doing that horrible of a job pronouncing. No, I mean they probably bumped her up to sideline reporter for you know the yep. The, I don't know, San Diego Padres or something. I'm not going to, I was going to say the Chargers. And then I realized they've been in LA for like five years. Oh. Anyway, uh, so sometimes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so why are you just... he writes, she has a place on my face. Boy, somebody yeah. needs to beat off before our show. Or during, you know, as long as uh, as long as you uh, you keep those uh, those views up, we appreciate that, Dwyer Christian. I'm pretty sure we have uh, we have a clip from Dwyer Christian in a little bit. I have uh -huh. to make sure. Thank that's you. For this week. Thank you. Uh, but so obviously, you can still be as prepared as you want to for your live shot, and you, as they say, sometimes God has other plans. And uh, this was a, a storm in Ireland, so a, a foreign local news clip. But uh, I, I already know that I'm going to have to play the end of this back as soon as it happens. So this woman is uh, outside in a storm. Always a great live shot when they do it. She's warning people to, you know, not go out in the storm. And uh, we'll see how that goes for her. Don't make unnecessary journeys. Don't take risks on treacherous roads. And don't swim in the sea. Incredibly, people have been spotted in the water here in Black Rock and Salt Hill, both today and yesterday. No! <laughs> I, what? I, I, I've seen that like 10 times what? and I started laughing before it happened. I just, I was just like, Oh, I know what's going to happen. I know what Eric's going to do. Yeah. Oh, let's go ahead and see that. Again. Hill, both today and yesterday. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, A goddamn stop sign murdered her. I, it just, it just clocks her right in the face. And even our audio audience can visualize what that looks like because of just the sound it makes. Cause it knocks down her microphone. 
That uh, that stop sign treats her microphone. Like They're in Black button. Rock and Salt Hill both today and yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I mean, you know, you can report on the storm from inside the studio. I think uh, that's that's really the key there. <laughs> we are getting some numerous calls for bullshit on this, and that's that on, uh, on that on video. stop sign. On that, yeah. all right. All right, no, and if maybe. you want to put some of them up, you can, but it still makes me laugh. So, yeah, uh, I, you know what I'm going to do? As soon as we're done with the show and I get a minute, I'm going to look that shit up, unless one of you can do it for us in the chat and yeah. uh, see if you can corroborate or, uh, you know, cross reference somehow. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you're I don't right. know. I honestly, I don't know if stop signs look like that in Ireland, but uh, the clip still makes me laugh. Right. If it's fake, that's well, quite all right. Uh, and you know, speaking of Ireland, I'm sure our, our buddy Husey has that happen to him at least twice a month when he's out late. <laughs> I, I will say this though, for a brief moment in time, one minute ago, I thought it was goddamn real, and I was in a special utopia over that, and that is <laughs> yeah. incredible. Well, that's Thank why you. I appreciate our audience keeping us honest. You know, uh, find out if that clip's not real. And if it's not real, I'll only show it a couple more times uh, before the end of the show, you know, but uh, we'll we'll move on from there. Uh, a uh, in-studio interaction that uh, caught my attention because it, it felt like sort of a like they were recreating a moment from the old uh, Hugh Hefner Playboy After Dark. You know, just sort of, you know, Hef would be in the tuxedo, would be walking around, everybody's having drinks, and he's trying right. to make, like, light conversation with people. So uh, this uh, Philadelphia news anchor is clearly the uh, Hugh Hefner of, I believe it's the Fox affiliate there. Feeding mothers might want to think twice before using spray tans. A new study has been found. Well, check out what happened to one mom and her baby. Oh my goodness, the <laughs> caption read, don't breastfeed after a spray tan. <laughs> Experts say, make sure your spray tan completely dries. You might even want to shower before nursing your little one. <laughs> it looks like a five o'clock shadow or something. It's perfectly round like a boob. <laughs> I wish I had that on my face. <laughs> After the weekend. Holy shit! <laughs> nothing. Nothing happened. I got... Nothing happened. <laughs> now, why... That's yeah. one of those clips that you feel like would have to be from, like, the 70s. And, and you know, it's a modern clip. It's probably not from, like, the last few weeks, but it's within the past year. Yes. And it's like, oh, that guy's really going out on a limb with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think the only thing that he stopped short of is, like, uh, it gives me an idea. Let's uh, let's go to break and try and recreate that, honey. I'm glad that he did it. You know, he's kind of living on the edge there. He's probably, yeah. you know, uh, had his house taken from him. He's had to move, <laughs> lost his job. Yeah. Uh, every, everybody in, in town hates his guts. Yeah. I thought the baby was dead at first when they showed it. I was like, what am I looking at here? No, it's just like the old... Uh... I, I, let me overemphasize this word: the old uh, hobo Halloween costume, you right. know, where you'd put like the fake uh, five o'clock shadow on. You'd have the little the little stick with the bandana on it. Uh, yes, it's a hobo costume. I don't want the chat to say that they misheard what I said. I was very clear. That was a hard B on that uh, that word right there. I think um, I have um, uh, a bit of a verdict on the video oh, with the no. lady getting hit with the stop sign. But I love it so much, Eric. Dang Lizard says videos from 2017 and edited. Damn it, Dang Lizard. At the, the least you could have done is tell it to us in a super chat. Doesn't no, matter. I appreciate that. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's probably still going to be the clip that uh, I use. It's sort of the very beginning before the opening of the show next week because of how hard it made me laugh just thinking about it. It's all right. It's okay sometimes. The fake clip, that's not going to hurt anybody to show that fake clip. No. And that's even better because now I don't have to worry about whether or not that reporter had like eight facial fractures, you know? Well, so. yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't give a shit if she did have facial fractures, no. but it was just fucking cool. For, yeah. Like I said, for one or two seconds, I was like, and not until anybody said might be fake. Yeah. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And then I, it never occurred to me, Eric, how come you've never seen this before? Yeah. yeah whatever. Cause it's fake. some, well, it's some fake. asshole who um, is calling oh. himself Carl, says smash the like or just click it. What the hell does that even mean? Well, it's very important to smash the like and uh, to, of course, uh, follow the channel, subscribe. Don't be a coward. 
smash the like, like Carl Hamburger, H-A-M-B-U-R-G-E-R. Hi, Lady K. I'm coming to Vegas, Lady K. I'll see you there. All right. So uh, there's uh, nothing more enjoyable than a uh, local news story where they just don't make any, they don't pretend that they're not calling someone out on their bullshit. And uh, this reporter, he's like, well, I have to try and be objective, but uh, this is some real bullshit right here. And for me, a woman claims that high winds blew cocaine into her purse. Kanisha Posey was in a car during a traffic stop in Fort Pierce in late March. During a search, the officer found bags of cocaine and marijuana in Posey's perch. Now, she told police that it was windy and the wind probably blew the bags through a car window and into her purse. Okay. She is charged right now with felony drug possession. Next one's. Yeah, I think that's important. You know, the uh, the no, 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 that, that, that's not my cocaine. The wind blew it into my open car window directly into my purse. Uh, you know. I, I don't know what that means. I think King of All Diffs accidentally hit a, the wrong key on his. Oh, I think that King of All Diffs is just excited for summertime. And yeah. uh, what's nicer on a, a you know a hot summer day, carving up some watermelon and putting it on a picnic table? Thanks, King of All Diffs. We yeah, appreciate that. Think- oh, and I guess uh, DeWire Christian's having uh, Popeye's uh, Louisiana Kitchen for lunch. I guess. Really weird. I think that I think the keyboards are malfunctioning on the chat. Yeah. I, I, I look, I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm just glad that uh, people are here. Yeah. All right. So all of these news clips, Eric, have been building up to this moment right here where I want to introduce you and our audience to a new friend. This is a uh, Long Island celebrity. Now, her name is Katharina Scalia. She's known throughout the entire 516 area code even a little bit on the outskirts of 631. I got to give credit to my buddy Tom Kelly, also known as Long Island comedian Tom Kelly, uh, who he hosts a great podcast, only great because it's had me on, called The Tom Kelly Show. (laughs) Thanks to Tom, I am able to present our audience with a lady who is known affectionately, in some cases very affectionately, as the hot dog hooker. Now, this is a clip from uh, just last week where the hot dog hooker unfortunately uh, pled guilty to being a hot dog hooker, which I think is not what she intended to do. I've been a topless dancer since I'm 19 years old. I love my job and everything. So where where is the prostitution coming in? You pleaded guilty today to prostitution. I plead guilty to stripper. A stripper, not prostitution. What happens when you give someone your card and they come to your house? What happens at your house? I do a strip, topless, lap dancing, you know, like in a strip club. How much do you charge? You ever go to a strip club? I charge a hundred bucks. And is that for topless and lap dancing? In your house? It's in the privacy of my house. I think it's legal. Getting back to the truck, you say you'll be back out there tomorrow? I'll be back out there with my bikini top on, selling my hot dogs. You are aware that the charge you pleaded guilty to today is a charge of prostitution. No, I'm not pleading. I'm not pleading guilty to prostitution. (laughs) I'm pleading guilty to being a stripper. A stripper and a prostitute are two different things. I'll be a. So, uh, Eric, my question for you is. How far into a 30 pack do you need to get before you uh, decide, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go swing by the hot dog cart and uh, visit the hot dog hooker. (laughs) I'd rather have sex with a dickless man than that woman. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Yeah. Depending of uh, which era of the Howard Stern show our audience is fans of, that's either Billy West's Marge shot impression or the character of Ronnie Munn's mother. Uh, Either way, (laughs) there is, there is nothing about is yeah i wear the bikini tops yeah i give a lap dance it's a hundred bucks i'm like a hundred bucks i mean Uh, that's way over market value for what we should be paying the hot dog hooker yes yes god damn now part of me wanted to save this uh, for the hall of fame because uh there are a host of clips of the hot dog hooker from recent years and uh i want to share this is one of the earlier ones where they're kind of uh, really making sure that people on Long Island are aware of the hot dog hooker. At the so-called hot dog hooker. Well, now neighbors say she's offering a lunch with a lap oh. dance from her front lawn. TV dance from her front lawn. 
I mean, they made a graphic to go with it, Eric. Uh, I mean, what uh, sees me? There's a fork and a knife. <laughs> it's a hot dog cart. So I've already got problems with the graphics department. Is she but, wearing a uh, fat suit or is that? I mean, uh, my God. Uh, do you, you think you know the answer to that question? Do you think look, she's wearing a fat suit? Look at the space between the tits there. I mean, it's yeah. like, ugh. God. Yeah. Damn. No, you could you could probably, I don't know, fit an El Camino between those tits, but uh, you know, maybe that's what some guys are into. TV 1055's Long Island Bureau Chief Richard Rose has the story. If I was a belly dancer, would you put me behind bars? Even in the rain, Kathy Scalia lounges about in her front yard, clinging to a large pillow offering a topless lap dance inside her home. Scalia says it's no different than what goes on in strip clubs. Lunch and a lap dance, that's what you get. Scalia says there's no sex and claims she just takes donations. Four years ago, the 49-year-old mother of four boys earned her notorious nickname after pleading guilty to offering sex to undercover officers from a hot dog stand town officials have since shut down she's an absolute disgrace to our community um, i think it's more a matter of mental illness than anything else shout out to lou Almoreta uh being uh you know this well, generation's uh baba Booey. yeah so yes. uh yeah so i mean it's just it's it's fascinating she's like doing advertising on a pillow sitting in her front lawn uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, I'm, look, if it works for the guys who hang out at the Home Depot parking lot, I guess that could work. JFK head chunk wants us to know I might be gay right now. Um, <laughs> this is one of those times where I'm actually thinking that our live YouTube audience should be envious of our audio only audience because they've just had to hear the voice. Right. They haven't had to see her. Yeah. And, and, and the voice is so bad that I it, it would be very difficult for any woman to be attractive sounding like that. I mean, come on. Uh, don't you want me to give you a handy, uh, Eric, right under the table? It's a horrible sounding voice. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, but it's like growing up where I did outside of New York City. That's like uh, half the moms of uh, my friends all sounded like that. So uh, yeah, that's only <laughs> charming on dudes. I hate to say it, but it's only charming. on. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's just. A woman yeah. with that horrible access or accent needs to be shot, frankly. We've got uh, one more uh, hot dog hooker clip. Uh, it's from that same piece. Uh, she's not very popular uh, with the neighbors. I, I feel like we'll revisit her in a future show, but uh, let's uh, let's send her packing with this one. Impressionable children in this neighborhood. We can't have a woman like this flashing herself posting signs like this in, in a residential area. This isn't a sign. This is a pillow. Look. Despite oh, her claims of... In I mean, she does have a great point, Eric. That's not a sign. It's a pillow. Look, I'm going to lay on my disgusting swing with it. Oh, she is. I give her credit. I mean, she doesn't let anybody slow her the fuck down. No, I I mean, I think they need to do uh, catch a predator, pre catch a predator style stings of just who shows up at this house. Even... If the gentlemen or, you know, maybe ladies leave their clothes on, I mean, who who's just like, yeah, 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 I, I'm willing to give the hot dog hooker a hundred dollars. <laughs> well, she uh, <laughs> catch a rhino. Thank you to wire Christian. The uh, the hot dog hooker here, uh, she tried to unsuccessfully rebrand herself, but then she realized that the name recognition of hot dog hooker was just too much, but uh, they'll talk about that in a moment. Despite her claims of innocence, Nassau police say they issued a warning to Scalia not to post any signs offering illegal services anywhere on her property. Nassau police say they've stepped up their patrols to see if the hot dog hooker is running an illegal cabaret inside her home. We're gonna change the name. The hot dog hooker the town is too. We're gonna change it to the hot dog honey. Sweet new nickname or not, town officials say they're monitoring the police investigation of the neighbor's complaints. In East Rockaway, Richard Rose, TV 1055. Well, the hot dog honey served five days in jail in 2012 on the prostitution charges. So, yeah, just to make sure that, uh, and by the way, that uh, that that reporter is, uh, you know, the, the news anchor is uh, fairly uh, attractive. But after seeing the hot dog hooker, I mean, she's like a 12 on a scale of one to 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, what does Mr. Blue Sky say there? <laughs> she isn't even handsome. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I, I think that uh, that is correct. <laughs> 
Well, uh, you know, we don't have uh, this next clip isn't from DeWired Christian. It's from Uncle Christian. So there's me. There's DeWired Christian. There's Uncle Christian. And uh, this might be a I guess it's a sheriff. You might be familiar with this guy because this is in the Michigan area. Uh, he, uh, since this clip, he has since lost his job, but, uh, he's really talking some sense about how we should handle, uh, those high speed police chases. Uh, shout out to uncle Christian for bringing this one to our attention. The official is calling for tougher penalties on those who run from police. Now, this after a high speed chase led to one driver blowing through a red light at 10 mile in Ryan and then dying in the process. Fox News Robin Murdoch is live with the new dash cam video of the case, or I should say of the chase, and the harsh words from Warren's police commissioner, Robin. Good morning, Jay and Amy. Yeah, the police commissioner did hold back during yesterday's press conference. It was during. The reason why I have this part of the clip, Eric, is uh, we talk about this a lot. Why the hell is she outside? She's she's got the very unsightly purple beanie on. She's got you know like a, a fur lined coat, and uh, it's right. just like I, I, I don't know. Record the stand up in the in the daytime where it's not so cold. Why are they going to her live outside where this, uh, yeah. this accident happened? You People know? just think too much. Just do it in the other room. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. During that press conference that he did release dash cam of this deadly police chase. Also, this is really why I wanted to share this. I'm sure this is why Uncle Christian sent it to us because we have deadly dashboard cam. And that if this 24 year old okay. did not run from police, that he would still be here today. Take a listen to Police right. Commissioner right. Bill Dwyer. We all feel bad that someone lost their life, but the officers are out there doing their jobs. And if he would have stopped, he would be with us today. This subject is dead due to the choice he made to flee from the officers. The legislature should change the law oh. to enforce a mandatory two-year oh. sentence for those that flee the police. So there, uh, you know, we don't actually have the uh, the impact, but uh, the aftermath the is law. right there in this video. Yeah, unfortunately, and, uh, yeah it, it, look, so the reason why I decided to share the clip is not the uh, surprisingly low audio, but it's actually because this guy's just making the point. It's like, yeah, you know, if he didn't drive away so fast, he wouldn't right. have crashed and died. And uh, this guy's lost his job now. He was like, he was one of those like, okay, I'm going to retire next month. No, 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 no. Right. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to just leave now. <laughs> So. I, yeah, I think he's uh, his that guy. I know that guy you're talking about. He's been in yeah. the news quite a bit lately. There's all sorts of scandal going on in that community where I actually grew up. That's right where I grew up, actually. Um, and yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say I was expecting that guy to be even more harsh and say, well, another guy who was going to uh, uh, you know, hurt our officers possibly with these police chases is dead. So that's a good thing. Yeah, then, right. You know. Exactly. We got this punk off the street. And, uh, you know, uh, our, our buddy Carl got uh, some flack for uh, saying on a recent WATP that, uh, you know, when you're stopped by the police, the thing to do is uh, be polite and not yeah. mouth off and uh, not be like uh, delete laws who fans of WATS right. know and uh, start filming. And uh, WATS uh, fans also know that uh, delete laws is uh, spending a few months in in jail in Las Vegas for not listening to police. And, uh, you know, look, let's, I, I, I'll put it this way. If you look like me, Eric and Carl, just always be polite to the police. I could see maybe other people might think like, well, I got to run, <laughs> but you know, we should be polite to the police. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying. You're saying white people have no problems. That's kind of, I mean, you know, look, uh, I don't know. I mean, you, let's let's uh you know what i'll put um reverend shit stain on this find me all the uh the police incidences of uh white suspects that uh end in <laughs> fatality all right reverend oh, shit stain yeah. at the end of the show i'm going to talk about something that reverend shit stain is going to share with us next week and it's amazing so i feel like there's there's a few good areas of broadcasting that uh, i can put him on Anyway, Eric, we had so much fun with local news. Uh, let's uh, try to put the brakes on that fun uh, by switching over to the decline of Western civilization, also known as who are these politics? A lot of people talking about Christian and Carl's segment, making it great with who are these politics? So 
Uh, in this clip, I can only describe it. Uh, we'll we'll make sure to bring our audio audience up to speed after we play it. But uh, in in this clip, the United States Secret Service very calmly helps a confused old man who is scared of the rain. So uh, let's see that. That Netanyahu should go. Oh, oh no! Yeah, that's all. That's all, Sleepy Joe. That's oh. all terrified of water from the sky, Joe. Just, I think if they hadn't been there, he would have just stared straight ahead in the rain. Probably for the rest of the afternoon. Go. I mean, that. this guy's trying to ask him a question, you know. Oh, have no. A, have you no decency, sir? He the has whole, no answers. The um, the fact that there's, a, there's always a person to shuffle the person along. Yeah. I mean, I do that to my father, who's 90. And is well into the end of his life stages with dementia right now. And I mean, this is no different. I see my dad when they're doing this to this guy. Yeah. It, this is just disgusting. I, part of this shit makes me sad. I mean, I want to laugh and this uh, joke about it, but this is fucking embarrassing. Yeah. I, I when I was uh, watching that clip, I'm like, oh, this is funny, but it's also it's also very sad. And uh we we all know Biden is uh, mentally compromised, but uh, there's times where maybe we don't need to be so quick to bang the drum. Carl, Carl asks, can we get your dad on WATB? We can. <laughs> yes, we absolutely can. He's on my show weekly. That's probably why Carl says that. I put my dad on every week and, to ask, and talk to him. Let, let, let me ask, though, uh, should we uh, record a segment with your dad or can we trust him to be on live with us? Uh, we could abs. We could do either or. We could do okay. either or. No, no, no. It's just more like, what's he gonna say? That's he's you know, a goddamn legend. If, if my grandfather were still with us, I would be like, yeah, we can't, we can't put him on live. Yeah, you know, right. it's a, you know, he, he'll, he'll try and be on his best behavior. <laughs> I'll let you read that, Eric. The Wired says Jackie Martin wasn't good enough. <laughs> oh, I, I loved having Jackie on the show, and I loved even more having uh, dinner with him uh, about a week later, where he could tell all the jokes that uh, he doesn't want to tell anymore <laughs> when when he's being recorded. All right, so we we know that uh, Biden's not as sharp as attack, but uh, let's not be so quick to bang the drum for the other guy. We have an election in the middle of a political season. We just had Super Tuesday, and we had a Tuesday after a Tuesday already, and we had Louisiana the other day. So uh, President Trump's point that you can't have an election in the middle of a political season. Uh, I, I think that, uh, I, I, I feel like we love Trump clips on this show. I feel like he's lost a couple of miles per hour off his fastball yeah. uh, from even four years ago, let alone eight years ago. <laughs> he, he used to just be able to filibuster any and every situation, but there's a, there's a couple of these clips now. This was a very long rambling press conference yesterday that, uh, I, I pulled just a couple of snippets from. And uh, it's like, oh, man, come on. Remind us that Rosie O'Donnell's fat. You know, give us give us what 100%. we we sign up for Trump for. One hundred percent. Do the impression of Biden. When you do the impression of Biden, it kills every goddamn time. I mean, and I'm not kidding you. For, forget the political thing. From a comedic standpoint, yeah. him impersonating Biden is a winner. Oh, so Somebody make sure that Don Jr. sends him the Biden in the uh, in the rain clip that we just showed, you know, because <laughs> yeah, I think I think Trump might might work something up for that. So, you know, he'd he probably even it. open an umbrella inside. Sorry, what we're saying. He, I was going to say he sells that shit. I mean, he'll yeah. walk away from the podium and he'll just. <laughs> oh, my God, is it great? Well, uh, this is a, a, a few moments later. Uh, he's uh, I, I think he doesn't understand what a misdemeanor is. That's not even a crime. We're being tried for something that's not even a crime. They say at most it's a misdemeanor, but there's no misdemeanor either. I just uh, wanted to point out uh, to the former, and uh, I know many in our audience hope a uh, uh, future president, a misdemeanor is a crime. I just, I just think it's important to put that out there. And uh, if you want you know, 20 minutes of him not at his best, uh, people can uh, go and find some of those clips. But in a uh, more high energy Trump appearance that uh, was over the weekend, 
he stood up for somebody who is actually a, an American hero, according to Trump. This clip's about a minute, but I want to let him sing the praises for someone named uh, J.R. Uh, Majewski. But uh, he's going to talk about how poorly J.R. Majewski was treated. Team Lanier and J.R. Majewski. Now, J.R., you know, they hit J.R. very hard, I have to tell you. These are friends of mine. Uh, J.R. was a hero and is a hero. And they hit him very hard with false stuff that he wasn't a hero. And after the election, they found out he was. And I, on behalf of our country, I'd like to apologize to J.R. Majewski because you were treated very unfairly. So, okay? Now, uh, maybe you don't remember who J.R. Majewski is, but uh, he is actually a, uh, very recently, within just the last few weeks, we featured him on this show. And uh, I'll remind everyone the disservice that was done to J.R. Majewski by, of course, J.R. Majewski when he was on a podcast that probably uh, 82 people watch. Well, the Democrats living in mom's basement and like talk shit on the internet. <laughs> um, you know, no matter how hard you try, arguing on the internet is like being in the Special Olympics. Oh, okay. No matter how good you perform, you, you, you still have, uh, you're still fucking retired. <laughs> so, yeah that's gonna get clipped and ran against me in the general election but uh except you didn't make it to the general election yeah so you know now. he was he was treated unfairly uh but uh you know i think uh trump had endorsed him at one point so he's like well obviously he's a good guy and uh it made for a great clip it gave me an excuse to play something again that i didn't think i was gonna get a chance <laughs> i had so. yeah. jr majewski is probably like god everybody's forgetting about me now probably best and then trump puts it right back on the front burner and throws his name out there i'm gonna see if he if we can get him on the show with us and your dad all right i'm gonna try and coordinate that we'll see how it goes yes, for, and, perfect. uh you know he was uh he was running in a primary in ohio and uh it just sort of reminded me that um they really make them special yeah. in ohio uh case in point jim jordan uh, the uh, definition of an empty suit, uh, you know, it's a, not much substance there. Oh, and there's also the, you know, the allegations of uh, some wrestling stuff that uh, I, I don't know anything about. I can either confirm nor deny. There's uh, allegations, don't know anything about them. Just saying, I've heard people say things. But here, I enjoy this clip of Jim Jordan because you see how he's very easily bullied by a grandmother, Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes, uh, for the simple fact that uh, she very lightly, very delicately, gingerly, the way an old woman would, not the way a hot dog hooker would, the way she just pushes back very lightly. And uh, he pretty much just, uh, you know, cuts bait on everything that he was talking about. What I've said is there were concerns about the 2020 election. I think Americans agree with that. No, they Let's, don't. You don't think they think there were concerns with the 2020 election? Well, Most means, people don't concerns. don't question the result. That's all I'm saying. They don't question okay, whether... Enough. Biden won or not. Right. <laughs> right. What? Pe most people don't oh, question okay. the no. outcome. Right. I, oh. I believe the answer to that situation isn't OK. Yeah. You know, if you're going to make your talking points, your talking point should be, well, a lot of people that I hear from. <laughs> The people I talk to are concerned. Maybe you don't know them, Leslie. See, I'm doing Jim Jordan's job for him. But yes, just that that moment where he's just staring at her like, uh, oh, he's got a million and one directions he could take this to continue to, um, you know, express himself about the things he wa that he believes yeah. in. And he just goes, OK, he just, this he is just a live got, interview. It's yeah. recorded. He's got time. What are you, you doing? He, what, he, he's been. uh working hard to uh, say what he believes for the last how long, and all of a sudden uh, she is going to uh, prevent you from speaking about it? I don't understand. Yeah, well, you know, she uh, she hasn't lost anything off her fastball, and that's where he just got right. it. He's just, <laughs> He's just staring right. at her. What? Pe what? Most what? people don't oh, question okay. the no. outcome. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right is not, you know, Mr. Trump isn't going to want to see you saying right at the end oh, of that. Oh, yeah. Clip. You know, 
So, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that one. That's, uh, you know, look, that's, that's no, that's no jet ski that doesn't work or microphone that goes down a tuba, but, uh, our, our final entry from the world of politics, I guess this is technically a, a pundit, but, uh, I appreciate anyone who appears on a political show who clearly has no time to appear on the political show because perhaps they are giving new meaning to the term talking head. What have you learned, sir? Oh, shit. Fuck. No, no. <laughs> so he's just staring down at his crotch. Okay. And I love that the anchor's like, okay. Yep. Oh, I, think I remember he just this nutted. one. This was yeah. the classic clip. Jesus Christ. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's like, okay. Yeah. He definitely just nutted. Uh, we're going to go to break. We'll see if uh, we can maybe talk to him uh, a little bit later. That dude right. from NBC, that's um, Craig Melvin, I think. He is uh, hes a big deal these days, Craig Melvin. Yeah. He's all over the Today Show. Uh, well, look, he's, uh, he's, he's probably got PTSD from who knows what he could see from his, uh, you know, on his monitor. Maybe he could see a little lower. We don't know what was that. Did, did, did it, was his dog there with a jar of peanut butter? Was it, uh, was it an illegal, who knows what was happening off camera? Well, it's time for, uh, America's favorite part of the show. The part that the rest of the world, uh, doesn't like quite as much, but I've got some good stuff. We've got some great stuff for who are these sportscasters? Home of the hourly triple play. W-A-T-B. Who are these sportscasters? Just listen and find out. Who are these sportscasters? So I can never share too many clips of Mike Francesa on this show. Uh, he's an institution in the, uh, the world of, of sports talk in New York. Never really cracked the uh, the national market like his former partner, Chris Mad Dog Russo. They already hated each other. So I can only imagine how he feels about Russo now. He's on ESPN, MLB Network. But, uh, you know, Mike's still at it. He does a podcast. And uh, I think in this clip, he shows off just how much he's learned in 40 years of broadcasting. Um, and... Uh... Um, um, come on, 15 seconds. Uh, he does Whoa. his best, uh, John Melendez impression there. That is something, uh, damn it. Uh, you know, um, you and I, the, the alarms would go off, we'd get yeah. uncomfortable, we'd, it would be visibly disturbed that something was happening the way it was sounding like he just did. He is. Looks like he could do that for an hour, <laughs> and I hope one day he does. <laughs> you know, we'll do a we'll do a bonus episode where we just sit in and watch him try. Uh, oh no, I'm not going to read that one. I already said something about Iraq earlier, so <laughs> I don't get it. What is this in reference to? His He's Iraq doing... the virus impression. I don't uh, even get the. I, 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 it, Anthony. Yeah, it yeah. looks funny. It looks it, funny. It, so it I posted funny. it. No, 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 it's fine. We, we, and we love Dwyer Christian. And uh, personally, I love Mike Francis. Uh, uh, you know, the videos of, of him taking live phone calls and literally falling asleep and startling himself awake uh, as it's uh, happening. I love all of these things. Well, this next clip from ESPN, I am sure Jim Jordan saw. This was a uh, shout out to uh, Awful Announcing where, uh, yes, we can find many great clips from that show. We could easily do a whole show with some of the stuff that they put up. Uh, this was uh, ESPN's coverage of the NCAA Division I Wrestling Championships. So the man being interviewed is uh, Virginia Tech sophomore Caleb Henson. And I think it's important to point out that he had a 15-7 to 7 win over Michigan graduate student. Austin Gomez. So a freshman beat a graduate student. Okay. Seems like the way it should go. And uh, look, he just gets excited and he wants to shout out his guys. Deliver, deliver the dot. Those are my fucking guys. Sorry. Oh. How, how do you... <laughs> oh, no. Those are my fucking guys. Oh, sorry. But they are his fucking guys. I mean, clearly. He's, yeah, he's a college Maybe. wrestler. Those are, those are his fucking guys. <laughs> they really... Shit talking about anything crazy here you know oh <laughs> my god that is awesome i like how he catches himself he's all beat to shit yeah 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know that's like the hardest sport there is. I'm told that that's like wrestling is is like strength and I mean uh, uh, endurance. Whoever wrestles is like the baddest of the bad. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And uh, he looks like a guy who's probably been wrestling since uh, middle school, you know, uh, but uh, good for him. You know, he won the NCAA uh, championship. This next clip uh, EZ sent to me. This was uh, posted by Rob Perez on X. And this is just a couple of fellas. We'll have to explain it for our uh, audio audience. I know we've had a lot of that this week, but uh, some of these clips are uh, too good. So we see a gentleman on the back of his jersey. Magic shooting over 50% as okay. well. That's He's going to take off that jersey in a moment. Keep an eye on. 22 and one his opponent are the Magic when shooting shirt. 50% or better. And they they realize, the like, hey, come get a picture of this. The jersey okay. swap. Uh, that's a winning yeah, we combination. Do a jersey swap, but make sure you take a picture of us holding Look, the two jerseys. Anthony Black and Grady Dick. So, yep. One Anthony from Black Arkansas, and the other from Grady Kansas. Dick. So, of course. Changing jerseys. <laughs> When you realize that you're on the court with Mr. Black and you are, in fact, Mr. Dick, you go like, come on, bro. We that have to do this. And he's like, yeah, let me go get a professional photographer yes. so that we don't just have cell phone video of this. These and two are then, awesome. And by the way, uh, Ginger couldn't look less like a like a basketball player. No. Uh, <laughs> it, it looks like some fucking dork who's in charge of the Cub Scout troop. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely I don't know, it's it's too old of a reference, but it's uh, Howdy Doody on HGH, basically. Yes. You know, I think that, I think basically. I think uh, Grady Dick, the white guy, actually spoke in a clip that I saw later, but didn't send you of him said, "Yeah, that's my guy. I love him. I love him." And he didn't really say a whole lot more than that. But no, I, I knew, knew exactly what they were doing. Let's get a picture but, holding black dick jerseys. Believe me, there was a moment uh, early this morning, late last night, where I really wanted to call this episode Black Dick, but uh, I I felt like uh, that would do a disservice to uh, our friend Carl and the channel that he's built. So uh, we went with the hot dog hooker and uh, something else we'll have a little bit later in the show uh, instead. But uh, just everybody in the chat right now, just remember that this is the Black Dick episode. I think that that's, <laughs> that's affectionately known as the, uh, the Black Dick episode episode so i think everybody pretty much hates boston sports fans at this point i mean i remember when i was a kid you kind of felt sorry for them you know my team beat them in the world series when i was 10 and i was just like oh, i kind of feel bad it's been a long time for them but you know the the early 2000s really kind of did away with any sympathy for the boston area you know the the patriots sometimes honestly, sometimes less honestly, winning a, a, the Super Bowl so often. The Red Sox with three World Series in like eight years. What's the uh, three? Jesus. Yeah, it's uh, 04, 07, and 12. And Jesus. then they won another one in like 18, just a few years ago. Yeah. So yeah, it's like it's enough already. And um, well, I guess uh, that uh, even – even Boston area residents hate Boston sports as uh, this recent piece showcases. Well, if you walk around Fenway Park here and talk to people, you'll find not only are they unaware of opening day, many of them can't even name a current Red Sox player. How many current players can you name on the Red Sox? Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> okay. This guy looks Danvers. like he should know. Try it. Uh, <laughs> His name's not Danvers. Damn, I'm, I'm blanking right now. It's the camera. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was, you yeah. know, must-see TV when Pedro Martinez was pitching. Sure. Usually other years, yeah. like, I kind of hear 25 about years it, ago. Or, like, people are talking about it. But this year, I, I didn't even know that they were, like, starting. I had no idea. In fact, Shit. you can find ticket prices for regular season games <laughs> as low as $11 on Vivid Seats. Yeah. So uh, the fact that uh, even people in Boston are like, ah, it's enough. Like we're, yeah. we're too annoying. The last thing anybody in Boston wants to do is sit in a stadium or an arena filled with other mass holes, other Boston residents. You They're know, just like, nah, I could understand if your team has always sucked, but they've Cor been very correct. successful. I, that, that's remarkable to me that they have given up so quickly. Yeah, and uh, I mean, they the they really don't know anyone on the team. Like, I can't name you uh, really any Red Sox because they uh, traded away anybody that I could think of. 
But at the same time, I'm like, I'm not supposed to know. You so know what I mean? <laughs> the, your team is the Mets, right? Correct. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we you obviously uh, know the Mets. You, you know, the I Mets, do. Right? Yeah, I know the team I follow. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I can't tell you the starting rotation, it's uh, mostly because uh, they haven't really figured out how they're going to be able to have five guys uh, on the bump, as they say. So uh, that's that's not my fault that uh, I can't name you the Mets rotation. It's a lack of options. But boy, they sure traded away a couple of good pitchers last year and Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. So anyway. That's neither here nor there. I do have uh, one more uh, baseball moment. And uh, the Chicago White Sox have a new TV announcer. His name is John Schriffen, who I think that maybe John Schriffen might want to pace himself over a 162-game oh. season because I think you've seen this clip, Eric, yeah. the way you're laughing. Uh, this was a spring training game. Not this week. This was like two weeks ago. Yeah. A spring training game. And – uh, Mr. Schriffen is treating this like it's Kirby Puckett walking off game six of the World Series. So uh, let's let's see what happens with a, you know, not particularly deep fly ball here. In this game tied for the major league lead in hits. And this has hit a long way, John. Hey, now, Eloy Jimenez. Hey, now. A two-run shot. And we are all tied at seven apiece. Jimenez, looking like the slugger we know he can be. Rawr, rawr. Rawr, rawr. He says, the first thing he says, it was hit a long way. We It went like 385 feet. Yeah. It was not hit a long way. Pretty basic home run during a yeah. game that doesn't fucking count. And he's giving it. Hey yeah. And, and look, I guess, you know, it's, it's spring training for the announcers, too. They're trying things out. And uh, I... Uh, I, I did once try and uh, I, I did for the internet. A buddy of mine worked in the athletics department at Pepperdine, Pepperdine University, and we called uh, a, an entire baseball game once, all nine innings. That's fucking hard, <laughs> and I thought I was up to it. I was not. Uh, is that, and, does that audio exist anywhere? You know, I'm uh, regretting talking about it right now. <laughs> and uh, when I said Pepperdine, I mean it was uh, Long Beach, is, uh -huh. uh, where I did it. Uh, I literally I had one joke that I worked in at one point. I, and my gotta, preparation okay. was all just notes that were in front of me. Get, get it to me. Just get I, me the audio. I'll just see if I can. Honestly, I, I have to see if I can find it. Um, I, I can find out exactly what day it was and we'll just see how deep their archives are. But, uh, if you're willing to sit through that, uh, I will. It, it's, it's probably be, be more entertaining than my interview with Harrison young. Oh, no, oh, I'm still not over it. Oh, no, I know. I know. Maybe uh, I should put uh, Harrison in touch with a hot dog hooker for probably a number of reasons. You know, <laughs> I think uh, I think it would make for a great interview. And uh, maybe he uh, shows her his in apartment uh, baseball game afterwards. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. All right. So our uh, final sports clip for this week. Uh, this is not our first visit with Paul Bissonette, who uh, is probably one of the only names associated with the Phoenix Coyotes for a casual sports fan. Uh, and uh, once again, this is uh, him from his current gig on the NHL on TNT. He tried to recreate a shot by Nashville Predators, Mark Jankowski, not to be confused with the guy who uh, talked about the Special Olympics. This is Mark Jankowski. And uh, this is an emphasis on the fact that he tried to recreate the shot. And the way the shot goes is funny, but the fact that uh, – that Mark just uh, not not Mark. Sorry, this is uh, this is <laughs> this is Paul. The fact that Paul can't walk it off is why I enjoy this clip. For Middleton's coming out with that stick, so he has no other option. Just to, boom. There oh, it is. No, that's why he didn't score. Oh no, goddamn it! That's, that's, yep. that's, no, God that's it. why he didn't score any goals. Let's not focus on that. Let's not focus on the, not focus on the negative. Let's not focus on the negative. Jankowski did an incredible job of just one touching that in the perfect spot. Stop. Oh, you know who's working for free today? That. Yeah. You know no. who's working for free? Biz is working for free. Gotcha. Let, let's set up over here, guys, so we okay. have that in the background. Oh. Let's not focus on. Wait a minute. One of these things is not like the other. What's going on there? that yeah i think uh i, I think that uh, they probably uh, accidentally gave that gentleman the wrong contract and he's covering the <laughs> nhl on tnt when he thought that perhaps there was a different sport that they uh -huh. were uh, hiring him to cover so. and he's like the the one with the sticks yeah 
So, uh, but uh, Biz, as his uh, his partners call him, really has trouble uh, as this clip goes on. <laughs> this right here. We haven't had this happen wants, since we're anybody else to break the stick. Watch the tune. Yeah, Bots, did you break? That's right, yeah, you broke it too. Did. Yeah, you did. You were ahead. I you buried it. You I went did. Top I, shelf, I should have done greedy. that. I'm a little rattled. I'll, you guys could take it away the rest of the segment. <laughs> oh, man. You want to do a lap? Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'll do yeah. a guys. lap. I'll be back. So he literally goes to do a lap because he's like, I, I he's and I get it. You know, it, it's very embarrassing, and uh, you know, like two of these guys he probably respects, but then they're all yeah. making fun of him and. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, as, yeah. as they go to break, to say, though, they, uh, you know, make sure that they slow it down for us so we oh. can really get a good look at the moment, <laughs> the moment of impact. And, uh, you know, uh, a, a cue to everybody in the truck, uh, you know, live sports. I, I can't imagine uh, covering on a regular basis. And uh, I don't know, but that's uh, that's fun for me you know, to have that uh, Hamilton burger hamburger. Uh, how dare you besmirch the hockey skills of, I want to say, Jaquan? Oh, hamburger. And uh, you can read Donkey Punch. <laughs> this is holy affirmative action. And uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to point out that any studio show that has them on fake field yeah, or fake ice suits oh, yeah. and sticks... I it's always so embarrassing. My God. Yeah, no, I, I hate the MLB network. They have the, the fake turf and oh. you've got like Mike Lowell and Kevin Millar in suits. Like, yeah, this is the stance. And it's like, all right. I mean, you know, it's okay. You just show us clips of the, the players uh, actually doing it. Well, uh, we've got uh, uh, two more clips, just a little treat for everybody because uh, we still haven't gotten to half of the title of this episode. So uh, we have to uh, take a look at some national newscasters, some national news here. So Ashley Banfield is on uh, News Nation now, which uh, seems to be the collection for people that you remember from in the past, having been on other cable channels that maybe you watch more often. You know, they've they've got Chris Cuomo, they've got O'Reilly, they've got a few other people uh, over there. Uh, but uh, Ashley Banfield has a show, and um, I, I just vaguely remembered her name, but uh, I do like the way she handles this story. Uh, covering a man who was arrested after a drunken brawl with a very unique legal name. I deeply regret the day that he legally changed his name to D's Nuts. It is really his name. His, his legal name is D's Nuts Lee Kroll. And this is his real mugshot to go with that name. Uh, this is not his parents' proudest moment. Uh, Mr. Kroll, D's if you're nasty, uh, was arrested a few days ago in Green Bay, Wisconsin, after a drunken brawl involving a BB gun. Uh, he has um, been charged with a misdemeanor, uh, battery and disorderly conduct. He was released on bond with a promise to be back in court in six weeks, where he will again be called up to the bench as D's nuts. The Smoking Gun website actually dug up the 2011 court filing when Derek Kroll changed his name to D's nuts Kroll, making him a hero of seventh graders everywhere until his arrest, of course. So best of luck to you, D's. That's it for us. I disagree. I think that this is the reason you change your name to D's nuts so that uh, the judge can say, Mr. Nuts, uh, can you please rise? <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I and the uh, the legal filing that they showed for our audio audience, it was it, this man's handwriting. I hate my name. I think they right. said his name was Derek. <laughs> so he's like, so I want to change my name to D's nuts. The and uh, if Look, I, I know by this point in the show, he's dropped off. Um, can we figure out a way to legally change Carl's name to D's nuts? I mean, there has to be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll message Jenny. We'll try and figure out how to maybe file some paperwork uh, because how funny would it be for, you know, it's just like, oh, D-E-E-Z-N-U-T-S, Lady Nuts Burger. Anyway, <laughs> that sets up 
what is one of the greatest moments in broadcasting history, which we will bring you in a moment. WATB Way back, back into time. Let's find out who are these broadcast histories. So this exchange went on a little bit longer on the people's court. There's a back and forth where uh, the gentleman being spoken to is clearly trying to get a question asked of him by the court reporter. I don't know. You like know I said, said, D D hit him, so it wasn't me. Maybe. What's D? D's nuts. He's this guy's crazy. D what? Huh? D's nuts. Harvey. <laughs> 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 so he can't throw it to Harvey Levin fast enough. He gets him to say D's nuts a second time. And, the, you know, they say, uh, you know, that a, a picture <laughs> is worth a thousand words. You've got this guy with his eyes bugged out. Yes. You've got the bailiff in the back who's just like he walks into the shot because he's like, oh, man, this is going to be good. <laughs> he's like, oh, this dude doesn't know what's about to hit him. He's like, I got to make sure I'm in the shot for the uh, D's nuts moment. I'm well, going to replay it one time so that we can see him, but uh, share your thoughts first. Yeah, and pause it at the same point, too, because I have a comment. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll, I don't, we'll, I don't we'll know. Right like I thing. said, D, D hit him, so it wasn't me. Here goes the D? D's nuts. He's, this guy's crazy. D what? Huh? <laughs> D's nuts. Harvey? <laughs> <laughs> so not only do we have uh, that dude next to the reporter saying it. you got bailiff and then even the photo of rusty, the bailiff uh, on the that, wall. That's a great point. There is the photo of rusty, well. the bailiff on the wall and uh, even rusty uh, RIP, uh, you know, rest in power, rusty. Uh, he, even he's laughing. He's like, God damn it. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen on this dumb show. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, have uh, we ever figured out what the, um, what the currency is? And is it Sweden? Was it Sweden uh, that we had? Was it Kroner? Kroner, I think. Yeah. So uh, we might have to do the. We, do the uh, we might have to do the exchange there. Uh, I believe that's uh, you know. So we got two hundred <laughs> Kroner. Where is that compared to the twenty dollars that we had at the beginning of the show? Uh, I'm already <laughs> trying to spend these two hundred Kroner. But so uh, one Kroner. Well, that's a, that's a Norwegian currency. Oh, okay. So what is the Swedish currency? Swedish. Yeah. You're, you're definitely, you're definitely asking. Okay. The, uh, yeah. It, now a Swedish krona. Is <laughs> oh, e right. They don't use the hard R there. No, that actually makes no. sense. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Krona. Is equal to nine cents. Ah, oh, God damn it. All right. I don't think that's $20. So. Uh, okay. Uh, all 200. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll read this, and uh, if you do the quick math, <laughs> we are not leaving until we figure this out. Uh, uh, SJ, I can never catch the main WATP streams, but I wanted to say thank you all the way from Sweden for all the lovely content I get to listen to after y'all have recorded it while I'm doing my chef work at the hotel. Bless. Well, thank you, SJ. Even if that is, I don't know, like, what, a like, it, Three bucks. I appreciate that super chat. No, it's eighteen dollars and eighty cents. So you came close to being the winner, but uh, we did already have a uh, a, a finalist uh, at the beginning of the show, uh, I believe. So we will uh, get back to that uh, when when time permits. But uh, for now, I want to thank everybody in the live chat. Uh, we'll be back at our usual time next week. Uh, that is uh, two p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and scheduled to join us next week, Robo Shitstain Mark 9000. Yes, Reverend Shitstain, powerful pooper. He compiled, Eric, we asked, and he delivered. He had a nine-minute video set to music of politicians fighting, and I told him, I can't get it in this week. I'm going to leave enough time for that next week. I promise you. We will get it on, and uh, he's right. interested in joining us ahead of time. So uh, I'm very excited for that. Uh, everybody, make sure they go to whoarethese.com. Find the phone number. You can leave a voicemail for us. But uh, I haven't reminded people in a while, but I think uh, people should remember that the way that we like feedback is you can say the most terrible, mean-spirited things about Eric Zane, but please, I'm very sensitive, do not say no. anything. 
that is negative about me, my performance, the way I look, my life choices, the state of my career. I don't want to hear any of that. You will nope. really ruin my day and I might even cry. So yep. I don't think anybody wants to do that. Take so it out please, on me. Yeah. Take it all out on easy. Uh, and uh, do not go to whoarethese.com and look for the phone number to leave a voicemail for WATB if you're intending to say anything that's going to hurt my feelings. But if you do go to uh, whoarethese.com, sign up for the Patreon and head over to WATP Live for Hackamania, May 31st, June 2nd, scheduled to appear. Tukey, Pat Dixon, of course, everybody from WATP, Patrick Melton, Ray DeVito, and uh, I believe... I'm also going to be there. So uh, head on over to hackamania.com, brother. Uh, you can find my podcast, The Blackcast, B L A D T C A S T. We just did our uh, MLB preview episode. So you can find that there. And uh, I realize I should let you go first because uh, I've had so many clips, so many plugs. I mean, but I want to let su subscribers of Compound Media know tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will not only be a guest on Don Jameson's show, That Jameson Show, I will be a guest on the final episode of that Jameson show. So wow. Over at compound media to see that. But Why is he wrapping it up? I don't know. I'm mean, just one of my questions. Question one for him. Uh, but uh, he, he'll also be with us in a few weeks to uh, talk about the release of his new album, which was recorded live at McSorley's bar down in Greenwich village. So you can ask him if uh, we haven't gotten any answers, Eric Zane, where do people check into the insane asylum and all the other things that? Uh, oh you're God! Working? Well, there's a lot. I mean, I don't know how much time do we have. Let me just start with the podcast, okay? Sure. Uh, the daily podcast is free wherever you listen to shows. Uh, just search Eric Zane Show on your favorite platform, and there I am. Uh, Monday through Friday, it's also live as it happens on Twitch. So if you search uh, Eric Zane live on Twitch. You'll see me there too. And then the rest you'll figure out just by listening to those things. So whether you check it out live or recorded later on makes no difference to me. Uh, hopefully you'll check it out, get caught up as to what's going on in my life and off we go. And I would be very disappointed if uh, somebody out there started pulling clips from the insane asylum and started sending them to me. Uh, that might <laughs> Bill blur. F your show, Zane. Um, I think we, did we read this one? Because I don't remember this. Dang Lizard, not going to be the winner, but I don't think we read it yet. And sometimes I, Christian Black, close my eyes and listen while I shove that hot mic up my keister. That would have been a great sign off, but uh, you are uh, not the uh, big winner, as they say. <laughs> Bill Blair. It's like he reads your, your, uh, your journal, you know, your, your live <laughs> journal. Well... All I that being said, I, can't I tell appreciate people, Bill Blur. I can't tell if people are trying to be mean or make me laugh because it's it's uh I never know. You know, I don't know if they're if they hate me or the just way trying to make me laugh. Yeah, I believe the way they describe that, Eric, is a little column A, a little column B. You know, I think <laughs> they want to be mean, but they also want to make us laugh. Uh and uh, as I said, uh, we'll be back next Tuesday. And uh that is all the time we have for now. So as always, this is Christian Blatt reminding you. That every mic is a hot mic. But who are these broadcasters is made possible in part by the First National Bank of Israel. Shalom. Shalom. Can we offer you a loan? White Waffle.